This is the M274 UL ATV, otherwise known as the Mongoose. And this is the Ultimate Scale Series version of that vehicle. It might be small, but this vehicle packs a bunch of detail. In this video, I'm going to go over why I chose to build this Mongoose, some of the features and details, and an overview of its general construction. So let's get into it. Most of the UNSC vehicles in Halo seem to be based on modern day equivalents, but usually with some kind of futuristic twist. But when it comes down to the M274 ULATV, it's quite simple, it's a quad bike. That's not to say that it's not a welcome addition to the Halo sandbox. A fast, light vehicle adds a ton of mobility possibilities for game types, such as capture the flag. And one of my favourite set pieces of the Halo franchise is strapping marines with rocket launchers to the back of these in the storm. So when looking at the mongoose, there's actually three types of mongoose that I could have chosen to build in the Halo franchise. I specifically chose to build the Halo 3 version, the M274, over the others for two main reasons. Most of my current UNSC USS mocks are from Halo 3, so the Halo 3 model will naturally go well with them. Secondly, I don't remember the mongoose getting quite the same use in other Halo campaigns. In Halo 3, you significantly use it in the storm, and in ODST, you use it as a rookie on Mombasa streets. I am aware that you use the mongoose in other Halo campaigns, but honestly, where they are used, they just aren't that memorable. The only other one that I can think of right now is the Pillar of Autumn mission at the end of Halo Reach, and even then, you barely use it. So for me, the Halo mongoose was the way to go. Being such a tiny build, this little mock is bound to have a limited amount of features, but I think that I managed to squeeze all the essential ones in there. There wasn't enough space for me to fit anything like a steering or a full-blown suspension system in there, but what I did manage to fit in were these suspension arms, so the model is accurate to the in-game model. Each of these arms can be individually manipulated, so if you wanted to, you could pose the mongoose post-jump or something like that. There is a downside to this, however. It does take some effort to level them out again, so if you're not careful, you will end up with a wonky mongoose. Fortunately, however, these do have quite a stiff connection, so they shouldn't move around during general use. As you'd expect, the driver's seat can easily accommodate a figure and the handlebars can be rotated to give the impression of it turning. Finally, there is provision for a standing rear passenger, although this doesn't work quite like it does in the game. When I started this build, I set out for it to be as close as possible. So this rear bed does actually fold down, but when you fold it down, it remains too bulky to accommodate a figure in a convincing way. In order to hold a rear passenger, you can just easily unclip it and then clip in this standing platform segment and voila! A convincing standing passenger. Once again, I do have an older iteration of this mock. If I'm going to be honest, I kind of find it hilariously bad now in comparison. So don't worry, I'm not going to spend that much time on it. Looking back on it, I would barely even call it an improvement to the original Megablox sets. What I do want to focus on though, is how this is where I first had the inspiration for the independent suspension arms. They are in a earlier, more rudimentary form, but this type of building method was essential to making the mongoose look so convincing in its brick form. In terms of the construction of this build, there's a few subsections that all attach to a central core section. There are a few parts of the build that simply unclip, such as the rear tray and the mudguards. The front bumper can also be easily removed. Finally, there's the front hood section. This is attached by a peg in the top hole. This isn't the strongest build connection, but it's strong enough for it to be relatively robust. The central section of this build does use a simple bottom-up build method. 
To represent the model in its fullest, I've adapted the build direction at both the front and the back to be sloped. This type of connection was achieved by using L plates that come with the through holes through them. You can then slot these onto bar pieces and then rotate them to the desired angle to perfectly replicate the in-game model. You might find that the underside is a little sparse, but considering that I managed to get so much detail in everywhere else, a few undersides of plates could be forgiven for such a compact build. As far as scale goes, it perfectly matches up with the 138 scale that I've set for my USS Mox. And whilst this build does have a few elements that can be twisted or misaligned, it isn't fragile by any stretch, which is quite a feat for such a small build. When looking at Mega's versions of the Halo 3 Mongeese, you'll find that they've only ever really had two designs. There's the original 2010 design that came in the UNSC Mongoose set and the original Battlescape set. These are actually a pretty nice design, especially when you consider how early they were released in the Halo line. They also introduced some really nice pieces, such as that small windshield that I ended up using in this mock, and that rear handle section. However, these sets couldn't accommodate any second passenger, which was probably their biggest flaw. This leads us to Mega's second Halo 3 Mongoose design, which featured in the original Elephant and the Versus Covenant Locust attack. Even though this is a separate design, I wouldn't exactly call this a complete redesign. This came with a couple more specialised parts, such as the front and rear fenders. Notably, the rear fender had a larger central clearance. With an added standing platform, you could finally accommodate that rear passenger. Whilst this is definitely an improvement, I still never felt like they ever got the proportions quite right in this build, but I should probably bear in mind that these are still the earlier sets. And that's it, that's all they've made of this specific mongoose, which I think is a shame. I don't think their older models were bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it does make me wonder what Mega could achieve with all of their newer parts. At this point, more than 10 years later, I'm not sure if Mega will ever really go back to this version of the Mongoose. So when I look at this build, I find it really refreshing to see a figure scaled sized Mongoose that looks so much more convincing than the older sets. Sure, it might not be robust enough to stand up to the vigours of play, but it was never designed to be, and it compensates for that with a boatload of more accurate detail. And I'm thrilled with this little guy. What about you? What do you think? Would you be happy with this build? Or would you prefer one of the other types of mongoose? Do you want to see Mega have another crack at the Halo 3 mongoose? Let me know down below. And hey, if you made it this far, then maybe you want to check out another video. Once again, thanks for watching. I'm Reforger, and I'll see you next time.